Have you ever heard of the venerable bead? Director Mark hasn't, I'm sure you have. Here's an Underceptions instant expert. Sarah Foote is the Regis Professor of Ecclesiastical History at the University of Oxford. Alongside her many publications and projects, Sarah has emerged as one of the foremost authorities on bead. So she's in a great position to tell us why we should be excited about this medieval monk. Bede is the most important person writing in Latin in England in the period between the fall of Rome and the Norman Conquest in the middle of the 11th century. He writes in, he writes more, he writes in more different disciplines, and he has a more long-lasting impact than any other single person who lived in pre-conquest Anglo-Saxon England. That's a good elevator pitch. So are you willing to go out on a limb and say he's the smartest per person for 500 years? Bede invents the English as a single people who are bound together by their ethnic Anglo-Saxon identity, by the fact that they have a past that they share. They're all migrant peoples who've come to live together on this island, that they speak this language that they have together and that they are bound by their worship of the same God and their adherence to the one true faith. He wrote commentaries, he wrote what you might call scientific or astronomical um, treatises. Can you, can you give us a sense um, of the sorts of different things he wrote? Bede would want me to start with his Bible commentaries. At the end of his history, he gave a list of his complete output. And these are the books I wrote. And he said, I spent my whole career interpreting scripture for people. His desire was to learn and to teach and to write, and it's the interpretation of scripture which is for him at the heart of his work. Mm. So he wrote commentaries on several different um, books of the Bible from the early chapters of Genesis through to Revelation, um, commentaries on two gospels, um, Mark and Luke, um, wrote the first ever commentary on the Old Testament books of Ezra and Nehemiah mm -hmm. about the restoration mm -hmm. um, of Jerusalem after the Babylonian you captivity. That at lunch. You think that you think that's significant for him? Um, he's really interested in in that work of rebuilding and the the point after the Chaldeans captured um, Jerusalem and um, took some of, of the Israelites into captivity in Babylon, but some were left behind. The temple was raised to the ground, but some of them were left behind in the occupied territory. When, and the Jews who were in exile in Babylon did their utmost to maintain their faith and their sense of distinctive identity by the Babel waters of Babylon, I sat down and wept. They had a sense that they were special, that they had their own God. They had no temple, there was no temple worship, but they could sing the Psalms to one another and they remembered their identity. When they got back to Jerusalem, eventually, they discovered that those Jews whom they had left behind, for whom there was no temple, had not managed to maintain their own sense of distinctive identity, but had in fact started worshiping with the, the occupying forces. So it's a situation that I think spoke quite distinctively to Bede in 8th century England, where you've got lots of vestiges of paganism among people who've never been converted. And you've got quite a lot of groups of people who once knew the good news of the gospel and for different reasons had lapsed. So you've got two faith cultures trying to live side by side and the necessity of imposing the truth and the law of the God of Israel back of rebuilding a temple and reshaping a people fit to worship God. And I think Beach saw direct parallels in, in his own day with that experience. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this chance to become an instant expert. You'll find loads more on this topic, plus a bunch of other informative videos over at the Underceptions YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search Underceptions. See ya.